I've had people ask me questions about doing certain procedures and so forth, and then I ask them, well, is that a good show? Does that convince the rest of the world that you're right? Well, it turns out it doesn't a lot of times. You know, just because you're legally right doesn't mean you're right in the public per perception. And who is this public I'm talking about? Well, it's the court clerk, it's the sheriff, it's the marshal, it's the cops, it's the mayor of the city if the case is important enough for him to notice it, and so on. It's all these, all these people who hold the guns. Okay, you want those people to be convinced you're right. Now, they may know they're doing wrong and taking your rights away on purpose, but the first step is to have them know you're right. Now, when they know you're right and they're wrong, that takes a little bit of steam out of their, their efforts. Okay? There's something about us humans that, in general, we tend to limit ourselves. Just like I told you the story earlier about the Buddhist uh, monk that was head of all the other monks. Nobody would kill him because they liked him, okay? He knew how to run his court, so to speak. He knew how to keep things looking good so that as he did his damage, he still, people held back. They didn't, they didn't take retribution on him, even though he was a major problem internationally for the government. So that's the first consideration. A court is a stage upon which the sovereign conducts his show so as to satisfy the rest of the world that his decision is a good one. Now, sometimes you do find somebody not guilty, but basically you're the, you're the plaintiff, the sovereign plaintiff. You know what the person did to you. He knows what you did to you. I mean, between you, you know what the truth is. So why have the court? You know, well, it's because you're actually putting on a show for the rest of the world. So put on a good show, okay? Don't take shortcuts. It'll pay. So that's what a court really is in practical terms. Now there's all kinds of courts, okay? You know about admiralty courts, maritime courts, uh, court of the exchequer, court of claims, all kinds of courts. But in America, there is only one court, and that's a court of record. All the other courts are what we call Nisi Prius courts. They are courts that exist because you failed to object. Okay? And you call it what kind of court? A Nisi Prius court. So that translates from Latin into without prior objection. An Nisi Prius court is a court that exists because of no prior objection. Okay? So, and you'll see it's right here. You see it, I have it on the menu, Nisi Prius court. And one time, I got a letter from somebody objecting. And so I put his objection up on the website, and then I put my answer to it describing an Nisi Prius court. It might be worth studying. But the important thing to understand about an Nisi Prius court is it's a court that exists without objection. So all those courts I mentioned are Nisi Prius courts. Another way, you could call them contract courts, but they're contracted because of your failure to object. So you don't have to have an overt act to have a contract. I mean, an overt agreement. By the actions of the parties, you know there's a contract going on. You know, if I give you some money and then I walk off and take your car, we never had an agreement to do that, but you accepted the money and I accepted the car, you gave me the keys. Even if we never spoke a word, you know that there's some meeting of the minds there, some agreement, right? After all, you took the money and I took the car. So a contract can exist on nothing more than the action of the parties. You don't have to have it in writing. You don't have to have the words spoken or anything else. Just what you did that shows there's a contract, an agreement, understanding. Nobody objected, right? 
You didn't object to me taking your car, and I didn't object to you accepting my money. <laughs> so there's an, there's an implied contract there. Well, the reason, Mr. Bill, we go back and forth like ping pong on my case is that I knew right away they would need new contract. But since I refused to get into their plate, then that's what started the bouncing ball back and forth, you know, until the end of the day, you know, until the end of the year. So that really explained a whole lot. Mm -hmm. If you're in contract, then you could play in contract. If not, you understand what the court you're in. Sure. But I don't want to play the game. That's what it is. Right. You don't have to agree to a contract and don't act like you do. Or if you do act like you, you're going to uh, go into a contract, uh, make an objection when you go in. Now, what used to be known as a Uniform Commercial Code Section 1-207, or I guess in California it's 1207. Contract, you can do anything you want. It doesn't matter if it's gold or silver involved. It's, it's whatever you, the parties agree to. Because in your sovereign capacity, you have unlimited power to contract. Bill, I had this uh, I had this issue with the city of Carlsbad. They wanted me to fill out a driver, uh, business license form. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't need to. I said, I, I, don't, I don't need your permission to contract. Mm -hmm. you know? and That's I said, common law, right? Yeah, and I said, show me where you can force me to do this. And the lady said, well, I'll get back to you. I gave her my number, never heard from her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, a lot of times they're... they're uh, one, of the, one of the characteristics of uh, a true monarchy or a true dictatorship is that things are done at the whim of the uh, dictator. It's policy instead of law. So they, they have their policies of what they do, but obviously, so far anyway, there's no law. Uh, greetings, Bill. I, I got a question for you. Get close to the mic. Okay, I, I've got a question for you. I, I've got a, a building permit. Mm -hmm. That's still active, and uh, I was wondering uh, if, if I have that building permit and it's still active, if a judge can uh, appoint a receiver, don't you have the jurisdiction to appoint a receiver when I've got a contract, a contract with the city? Well, that answer is very simply answered by reading the contract. Okay. Yes, that's what I thought. Yeah. I didn't think he had jurisdiction. You know, what acting party does not make a claim of an injury or threat of injury because of your failure to do or your threat to do something, then the judge has no authority either. But that's all in their court anyway. What you really need to do is a counterclaim on these guys and sue them. Great. Okay, thank you very much. We'll get into that later about the counterclaims. So, anyway, the... Uh, uh, so the Nisi Prius court is a court that exists because of the failure to object to whatever it is they are doing. And that's fine. If, you know, you can run a court any way you want as long as everybody agrees and as long as nobody objects. But if somebody objects, the only court that, that can exist without the voluntary participation of everybody is a court of record. Now, a court of record has to meet some criteria. Here's the requirements of a court of record. The first requirement is optional. It generally has a seal. <clears throat> the reason it's optional is because very simple. Back in olden days, the making of a seal was a very, very expensive proposition. They didn't have the tools, metal working tools that we got today. And uh, there were sovereigns who were too poor to have their own private metallurgist. So the, gen the, the seal is optional. And in fact, if you want a seal, all you have to do is put the word seal by your signature and now it's sealed. Are you and aware that Black's fifth and sixth took out that fourth, number four? Pardon? Blacks fifth and sixth. Well, I'm working toward these things. So the, uh, uh, I, I went to uh, the United States District Court in Las Vegas uh, a couple years ago, and I wanted uh, 
some sort of a certified document, which means they'd have to seal it.